Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin and in today's video, I'm going to go over how I made all A's in my prereq classes for dental hygiene school. Now I'm really going to focus on like A&P and chemistry and things like that because that's what most people struggle with. So I'm going to go over how to study for those sciences and make the best grades possible. So again, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button so you never miss a video with me and we will go ahead and get into it now. Okay, so I want to make this video short and sweet because study tips can sometimes get overwhelming. So I just want to let you know exactly how I made all A's in my classes. For me, I do so, so well with flashcards. I love flashcards. It kind of like puts it into my memory to like just know it right then. That is the number one thing that I'll do. I'll make flashcards with important terms that I need to know. It helps to go over it yourself and then also I can give those like to my roommate or to my sister or whoever and have them flash it to me and that really helps to remember it too. And then sometimes like whenever I do it with my roommate, she'll be like, oh, you could remember it like this. And then you're like, oh, thank you so much girl I'm gonna remember that you know what I mean like some little stupid like rhyming thing something else that I also did would be to make a quizlet so I had a friend in my AMP 1 and 2 class and in my chemistry class but I did not use quizlet for chemistry I used quizlet for AMP 1 and AMP 2 and micro and all the science classes besides chemistry me and my friend would switch off and we would make quizlets she would do one chapter I would do another chapter or something like that and then we would be able to go back through it and study it on our phones, study it on our iPads, on our laptops, wherever we are, we could study using Quizlet. And then on top of that, if you don't have time to make them, usually AMP is usually about the same information. So usually you can go on there and find like AMP chapter one or like the bones chapter. Like you can go on there and you ac can actually find pre-made flash card. Now the next thing that I would do is take Cornell notes. <laughs> and I know this sounds like middle school. I took a college prep class in high school that taught me how to take Cornell notes and I really love it because you take notes on a third of the paper and you write questions on the left 25% of the paper. 25% whatever it is. Whatever percentage on the left side is, you draw a line down the middle. I'll try to insert a picture right here of what Cornell notes look like. You take all your notes on the right and then you write your questions on the left and then you can fold it and try to answer the questions as you're studying. And I really, really love studying like that. Then also what I would do is I would read out loud in the book. So not in chemistry. Chemistry is, is, a, is a special, special class, y'all. Chemistry is completely different. So anyway, I would read out loud in the book. So I would read it out loud. So I'm saying it, I'm hearing it. It's all you know, going in this. Then after I learned it, I would also try to teach my friend about it. So my roommate, I would be like, hey, let me read this to you. Let me teach this to you after I learned something and trying to explain it to someone who has no idea what you're even talking about. That really, really helps because it helps reiterate the fact that you actually know this, you know how to explain it. If you can teach it someone to someone else, then you know it, you know what I mean? So I would go to the school and I would look at the bones. I would look at the muscles because they have all of those big Big, you know displays there and you can like hands-on interact and like look at it and look at the things to be able to remember exactly what it is because in AMP 1 and AMP 2 you have to know every single bone you have to know every single muscle you have to know the oh you have to know so many things so let me show you how what I would do to learn the bones and the muscles now whenever you first start AP 1 and 2 you're gonna have to know tissues so I would take pictures of the tissues and I would put them on a flashcard, on the front of a flashcard. So I have all these little tissues and then on the back, I would put exactly what it is. And then I would flash it to myself and that's how I would remember what a kidney looks like, tissue wise. So how I learned the bone and muscles is I would print out a picture of a bone. And so this picture was already labeled, it already had that this was the carpals, this was the metacarpals, this was the phalanges, whatever. It already had that on there. So I widened it out and I numbered them one through six or whatever diagram you're wanting, you know what I mean? And then on the back, excuse my terrible handwriting, I would write exactly what it was so that I could look and I could be like, okay, number one is the carpals, number two is the metacarpals. So that way you can flash it to yourself and that was 
honestly how I got 100s on my bones and muscles and all of that. The next thing that I would do is write down my PowerPoints before class. Now I saw a lot of people printing out their PowerPoints and taking notes on it, but what I would do is I would look at the PowerPoints because you know a lot of times professors give you PowerPoints beforehand like on an online resource. I would write the PowerPoints out. So I would look at it, I would write it, I would leave spaces in between and then I I would go to class and they would go over that PowerPoint and I could actually just sit back because I already had everything written down. I could sit back, understand, and then I would take notes in another color pen for whatever the teacher added to the PowerPoint. Also, I would record my lectures and then re-listen to them. And do you wanna know what I learned doing this, y'all? I learned a lot doing this because recording your lectures and taking notes while you're recording your lectures, if you go back and listen to it, you miss a lot of stuff, like a lot of stuff. So it was really, really beneficial beneficial to me to record them and go back and listen whenever I had the time to and I would go over my notes as I'm listening and I would miss so many things that were important just because while you're writing you can't you can't write and understand what the teacher is saying if your teacher allows you to record definitely take advantage of that so that you have that reference the next thing that I did is I study with groups of people this is a double-edged sword. People can get crazy, especially if you have bigger groups. In my AMP 1 and 2 class, we had a group that we studied with occasionally and we would go in like before tests and stuff like that. And the, how it benefited me is I would already study in advance, obviously, every day. And then I would study a lot the night before a test. And then the morning before a test, we would all meet in the library. That was beneficial to me because I already had everything. I already knew everything. I already went over everything. So this is kind of like a review. If I tried to meet with them, and actually learn the information then that would not have helped at all because you can get sidetracked and I feel like you don't get as much studying done whenever you're with a group of people than you would if you were by yourself. It is beneficial for being able to learn something a different way because someone has a certain way of remembering it. The number one tip that I can give you for being successful in these science courses is staying on top of it. Do not procrastinate no matter what you do. Every single day, take an hour out of your day, every day and study it. For AP1 and AP2 and even chemistry, everything builds on each other. If you don't have a good foundation, you're, you're not gonna make it. For AP1, for example, they start out with the tissues and then they move on to a specific organ and then an organ system and then, you know what I mean? So it all builds on each other. You have to know the foundation, otherwise you're not going to know what is happening day one if not before school starts read in your book try to figure it out beforehand and read and do it every single day because if you're determined like that if you are doing those things you're not going to fail you're going to do well because you have no choice if you're reading it every single day and you're putting it in your brain every single day and you're asking questions in class and you're talking to your teacher whenever you don't understand something you are going to get an a in that class girlfriend or boyfriend because that's what's truly gonna make the difference if you live sleep eat and breathe this stuff you're gonna know it and you're gonna have to know it if you're going into dental hygiene or if you're going into nursing it's not something that you need to learn and then you can forget the next semester it's something that you're gonna need to learn and then take a boards exam for it so you need to learn it to know it and not learn it to know it for a short period of time I hope this video helped you people study differently so honestly what works for me it might not work for you I hope that it does if you try it let me know if you try it and some of it helps you you can leave a comment down below if you have any of your own study tips I would love to know going into dental hygiene school if there's any study tips that I need to know that I don't know already. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe as always, and I will see you guys on the next one very, very soon. Bye guys!